Oh, it's Scott Manley here, and today I am playing Ooh Light, which is a remake of one of the most important games from my childhood. Ooh Light is a remake which is almost old enough itself to qualify for a remake. Uh, the remake is, comes from uh, 2003, so that makes it almost a decade old, but the original game is Elite, and it was released in 1984, so that makes it practically it's almost 30 years old. And you might have heard about it recently because David Braben of Frontier Developments was running a Kickstarter to raise money for Elite Dangerous, which should be the fourth official Elite game. Now, the original game was, uh, it, it was really an important space trading game published by Acornsoft in something like 1984. It came out originally on the BBC Micro. And, well, the idea of the game is you have a spacecraft and you can fly around this procedurally generated galaxy. You can buy and sell stuff at stations. You can encounter other spacecraft and either shoot them or run away or various other things. In addition to buying and selling cargo, you can buy and sell upgrades to your ship. As you can see here, I have managed to acquire a large cargo bay and extra energy units and all these other things. Those help me a great deal to, on my quest to become elite, elite being the highest rank of pilots. Now, you see here on my list of, in my, under Commander Jameson, that I, I'm flying a Cobra Mark III. I'm in the system of Quator. I'm docked. I have two light years worth of fuel, 24,000 credits. My legal status is clean, which means I haven't been sh pirating. And my rating is harmless. Now, as I shoot more guys, my harm, my harmless status becomes mostly harmless. And then it goes up higher and I eventually become dangerous, deadly and elite. And that's really the nearest thing there is to a goal in this game. It's largely a sandbox. There's not much, there's no real direction. There are a few missions, but those are incredibly rare. Uh, like the original game, I think, had two missions in it. I'm just going to start selling stuff. Now, where is it? Yes, so I have one ton of computers, which I actually picked up from a pirate. So I'm going to sell that for profit. I could buy, well, what's cheap here? I could buy some furs, probably, because this is a... This is a... Oh, I don't know why, actually, what place this is. This Oh, this is an industrial. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't buy furs. I am actually just going to fly to another st system and shoot more things. So... What I need to do is buy fuel, and then I'm going to go to the map, there, where can we go? We have Ra. What is Ra? Ra is a corporate state, a poor agricultural corporate state. Corporate state means that the it's hugely secure, there probably won't be much in the way of piracy going on, unless I bring it, so I'm not going to go there. What, what about Relais? It's communist, well maybe communist will have something going on there. I might just try that. An average industrial. What? It also is a tedious place. That's one of the cooler things. The original game had eight galaxies of 256 stars each. They were all procedurally generated. And you can point at any one of these and press seven and it'll tell you the status. And they make up, they have this like flavor text. It is a tedious little planet. This planet is mildly fabled for its inhabitants, eccentric love for tourists, but plagued by deadly earthquakes. Usa. The planet Usa is reasonably noted for its inhabitants' eccentric love of tourists and the Usaing tea, uh, tree grub. Fascinating. How about Zasua? It's mildly well known for its exotic nightlife. Let's go there. I don't know. We might shoot something. Maybe not. So I press 1 to launch and then accelerate. Uh, oh, that's the planet ahead of me. Now, the original version, of course, was written on an 8-bit micro. That planet would not be nicely textured on fractals and all that. It would be a circle, as would the suns behind it. If I press 2, I can see out my rear view. That is a space station I've just left. Note that they are rotating. I think they're supposed to be a kilometre across. If they are, then they are generating some very high Gs there. Because <laughs> of the speed at which it's rotating. Uh, the game has time acceleration for flying between stars and stuff, so I'm just going to hold J to initiate time acceleration. There we go. Uh, it looks like that's an asteroid field I'm going to fly through. Whoa! 
That really didn't work as well as I expected, did it? <laughs> I totally did not expect that to happen. <laughs> okay, I'm back at Daiso. <laughs> wow! That, yeah. You know, what do they say? You know, flying through hyperspace ain't like dusting crops, boy. Without precise navicom coordinates, you might fly through an asteroid or <laughs> bounce into a supernova, and that'd end your trip real quick, wouldn't it? Okay. <laughs> I cannot believe that happened. Let's go again. Uh, oh, look. I can target this dude. Oh, no. You. T. This guy is a police. A Galcorp Viper Interceptor. There we go. Which space in 15 seconds? The. the Spacecraft are all named after snakes, so the police have vipers. I'm flying a Cobra Mark III, and you'll find other people in things like asps, adders, um, crates, sidewinders. There are cargo ships in the form of pythons and anacondas. There's also a few other things like transports and worms. And also, there are there's a race of aliens called the Thargoids who fly warships. Their warships are the biggest, baddest things in the game, and they are also able to launch drones, which are kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, the original Elite came out on a, you know, on the, the BBC. It was one of the first games to have 3D wireframe graphics with hidden line removals and all that. And uh, it was also innovative, hugely innovative, for me, anyway, and many other people my age, because it contained with it a novel that kind of set the background. A, you know, it was a novella, it was, you know, a pamphlet, practically. Okay, these guys are attacking me. So I'm gonna... Oh, there he goes. Yeah, oh, damn it. Okay, this dude... Uh, no, 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 no! What is the energy bomb? Ah, what have I done? Okay. Okay, gotta get this dude. Is this dude? Yes! I blew up one of the dudes. Awesome, now I gotta get the other one. So I've, it's three against one, and I know. Ah! I'm gonna launch that missile. Oh man, he's blown that up. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yes. Ah! Crap, did I bump into him? I, th I think I just crashed into that dude and killed him. Yes, ramming speed! Okay, so these guys are pirates, and that's fine because... Oh, where is he? I can't... Oh, there he is there, right? It's so hard to see, yeah. Oh, he's flying a mamba. Mambas are fast. Okay, and I'm hearing the kettle going in the background. Yes! Ha <laughs> ha Take that, pirates! Oh, no, there's another dude there! Come on! Yes! Incoming missile! What?! Oh, I pressed R instead of E, so the missile killed me! <laughs> it's clearly too long since I played this game. Let's let's refuel once again. I'm going back to that system because it was actually good for shooting things. Reorte. Okay. What is this? It's my, oh yeah, it's eccentric love of tourists but plagued by earthquakes. Okay, let's try this again. That's a Galcorp vile viper. That's a nice ship. Okay, hyperspace. And you also have like left and right view. There it is. We'll fly past it. Now I can see him on rear view. There we go. Yes. So, I mean, the game really was a sandbox. There were very few rules. There was a few different ways to make money. You know, you could you could just make money by shooting uh, asteroids if you wanted. And then if you had a mining laser, the asteroids would yield minerals, which you could then scoop up and sell for money. So that way you could be an asteroid miner. You could just go to the stations and buy stuff cheap in one place and sell it expensive elsewhere. Some of the stuff was illegal, so you know you would want to run 
trade routes, you'd try to avoid the police. That would add an extra thing. But but for higher profits, obviously. You could be a slave trader. And, you know, you also had the option of attacking some vessels. I'm just going to target this thing. What is it? So I can get... But at this, if I can get a lock on... Oh, he's clean. So he's probably not going to attack me. So I'm just going to fly past him. Um... You could be a bounty hunter, and bounty hunter would basically go to dangerous systems like this and find bad guys that don't have a price in their head and, of course, kill them. And, you know, all these things were great, but, you know, trading was really the way to make money early on. After that, it was mostly, like, that you wanted to shoot these things. Or, you know, you wanted to pretend that you were an asteroid miner. Um... <laughs> But, you know, that model, you know, the whole idea of make money by trading or fighting or whatever, and then you upgrade your ship, explore the universe, that obviously has been taken and reused in a number of games. It's, I mean, it's it's been a hugely influential game. The original Elite. I mean, you know, EVE Online is a great example of something that took that, turned it into an MMO, and they've obviously expanded it into a universe which is huge. I mean, um, privateer, you know, the Wing Commander Privateer, um, Freelancer, Escape Velocity, the X series as well. There's so many games that owe a debt to, to this. Okay, what is this dude? Oh, he's clean as well. Okay, well, that's no problem. I'm just going to press I. I is fuel injection. That lets me use my afterburner. See it? Yes. Afterburner! Yes. You can't use your mat, your jump drive when you're close because, you know, it's essentially a time acceleration trick, so you have to get away from things. But you can use your afterburners. Afterburners are not in the original game. These are an addition in later versions. And there were a lot of later versions. The original game appeared in the BBC and the, the Acorn Electron. But later versions appear on the Apple II, the Amstrad, which is the first version I played, the Commodore 64, the ZX Spectrum, the MSX, uh, appeared on the PC, obviously, the Archimedes, the Amiga, the Atari ST, and the Nintendo NES. The NES was probably the best version, they say, of the 8-bit versions. The Acorn Archimedes um, was probably the best all-round version prior to the release of Light. Because it actually added a lot of the features that were seen in, in Oolite in terms of being able to follow the... Oh, look, are these more asteroids? This looks like a whole asteroid field. I don't... I wonder... Yeah, I think if I just point my spacecraft... I'm wondering, is that... Is that the station there? That might be the station there. Ah, oh, come on, jump! I'm so not wanting to deal with you asteroids. You know the probability of successfully navigating an asteroid field is approximately 4,720 to 1. <laughs> but, sir! Oh, C-3PO, your probabilities are burned into my head. Well, that's an asteroid deal. Let's not fly into it. Yes, jump drive! We have jump drive power once more, and now we're mass locked once again. I wonder if this guy's going to be a pirate. I better tar. Oh, that looks like the space station there, actually. Mm -hmm. Are these guys coming towards me to fight? I'm going to try. No, he's clean. He's That's a python. Oh, look, wait, he's under attack. Awesome. Who's attacking him? Come on. Ah, oh, this thing is so terrible to control. Maybe I can help him. Maybe I can get, like, some, some money, reward money. I cannot target this dude. No, he, he's the easy offender. Right, there we go. So I'm going to get in close and shoot this dude if I can. Right, because he is apparently attacking that poor defenseless... Python. Come on. Fight some, pick on someone your own size. As in a later, better version of your own ship. Ah, he's, he's loving it. Okay. Yes! 
Excellent! Oh, and he's got a friend. That's the only thing. Missile armed. Missile armed. I... I shall go and attack you. I'm zooming in. The original version. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's a black... It's a mamba. Not a mambo, it's a mamba. Yes! I think the mamba is actually the fastest ship in the game. Uh, there we go. So that dude, I helped that dude out. I could now go and pirate him if I wanted. Ah, but he's now getting in the way of my quest to fly, fly the space station. Where is the space station anyway? That's it there. I want to be going to it. I wonder if it did I actually pick up any... I haven't picked up any cargo. So I'm just making money from shooting things, I guess. Not so much for that. I guess I can use my witch drive injectors to get there a little faster. That'll save a little bit of time. Yeah, the, the game came with this novel, which really kind of fleshed out the universe. It had the story of this kid who's... You know, he was a traitor with his father, and then his father was assassinated because he knew something. And you know, he was in a spaceship, so he ultimately steals a spacecraft from uh, scraps, uh, you know, a junkyard essentially, fits it out, and eventually goes around the galaxy, finds the dude, and gets his revenge. And that was a great story because it told you all this stuff that, you know, was not in the game in any shape or form, but. You know, people wanted it to be in the game, right? They, <laughs> they would come. People would come into school. I remember, and they would tell us stories of things they had found in Elite. And it turns out, in retrospect, they were making this stuff up. They were telling me, "Oh, we found a generation ship. It's this giant spaceship that's so huge, and you know, you you if you shoot it, then all the guy, all the police come after you for interfering with archaeology." Or we found a military convoy. We followed all these ships, and then they were, they were, um, they eventually went to a big battle with tons of Thargoids. And I thought, wow, that must be amazing. Yeah, they were making that up. That was the '80s version of how to resurrect Eris from Final Fantasy. But yeah, it was you know really quite a phenomenon at the time. <laughs> wow. So anyway, yeah, the game, as I said, it came out in the mid-80s. It probably was getting new versions released right up till 1990. And then they kind of, the guys, Ian Bell and David Braben, they went their own way. And in the end, David Braben went off to continue building sequels. I'm going to press computer. Where, why is my docking computer not activating? Oh, there we go. Yes. I forgot to press C. Ah, there we go. Now we gotta let my docking computer activate. <laughs> I was, I was pointing at the wrong window. So, what was I saying? I've completely forgot what I was saying. Well, people made stuff up because the manual did contain all sorts of extra things that weren't in the game. They had a lot of flavor text for all the spacecraft, as I said. It, Made, named all these random people and legends and stuff and people wanted those to be in the game but they weren't. Oh yeah, so David Brayman eventually you know, separated in you know, his business relationship with Ian Bell and he went off to form Frontier Developments and they created a proper sequel in the form of Frontier Elite 2. Now that abandoned the that basically added proper Newtonian physics it added proper star systems, right? You could actually fly to, you know, Earth. And you could fly to all the moons. Of course, you know, <laughs> it was released in the early 90s and we've actually found more moons since then. The system was all Newtonian flight, so you know, it would accelerate towards your target at continuous acceleration and you'd use time acceleration. And then you would turn around and decelerate. Actually, you wouldn't turn around because every ship in the game had forward thrusters and retro thrusters, and it w they would generate some ridiculous acceleration. This was all very good from a realism standpoint, but unfortunately it meant that the, the space combat wasn't nearly as fun as as was in, in the original Elite. You know, there wasn't any turning around or dogfighting. It was more like jousting with lasers. 
and you would randomly crash into things and have no idea how to dodge them. So, you know, that was that was a uh, un- that was unfortunate, but you know, it did add missions. It added much more, you know, much much larger universe. You had a whole galaxy to explore, and it also added the ability to change your spacecraft. You know, you could fly or, fly around in a little space fighter, or you could get the Cobra Mark III if you want, or you could get uh, a giant cargo ship. Some ships would be unable to land on planets, right? Or some planets would have surface gravity that was too high for your ship. Then, you know, other spacecraft could handle it. So you had surface-based destinations. You had um, stations in orbit. You know, the scope was so hugely enhanced, it was great. And then there was a second sequel, Frontier First Encounters, and that dealt with what had happened to the Thargoids. Now that was, everyone was quite excited to find out what happened to the Thargoids because of course we all remember getting killed by them repeatedly. But people were so excited, I guess, that they, I guess the publisher wanted the game released way before it was ready. And it's famously one of the most buggy games ever released and had several, several patches to make it playable. And in fact, led to lawsuits and bad reputation. And so, there's a lot of people that, you know, want to see Elite Dangerous made, but didn't actually feel they wanted... They were wary of supporting it because of the the history with the game being pushed out. But I kind of want to believe that that was the publisher's fault, but, you know... That's that story. So that was the three official Elite games. And then in the 2000s, people started to recreate the original Elite in the form of Oolite. I think it was originally called OO Elite, but then, you know, they were requested to remove any associations with the original game. Oolite actually has a, a lot of scripting capabilities, and people have added a lot of new spacecraft and features. It's well worth downloading for free. And oh wow, who's I don't like? Oh look, somebody's fighting here. I wonder which one's the good guys. Is this guy? He's clean. So who's shooting at him? Okay. Oh. Incoming message. Oh. He's an offender. Come on! Incoming missile. Oh man, blew up my own missile. Oh, what is that? What? Oh, that's a, that's a python. Who's firing at me? Identification system oh, darn! Smashed into him. That was not good. Okay, he's, he's a python. I'm going to shoot him. Yes! Oh wow, and I picked up some food there. I'm spinning out of control. All that grey stuff on my chart is apparently... Oh, he's another dude there. Oh wow! Oh! Where is he? What is that sound there? Ah, there he is. Ha <laughs> You pirates cannot cope with my superior firepower. I've no idea if I'm actually making money here, of course. One of the cool things in New Light is that you can pick up the escape pods and they sometimes will contain wanted individuals, like named individuals that you can turn in for cash. In the original Elite, if you picked up an escape pod, you always got slaves. And if you picked up one accidentally, that could ruin your status because slave trading was, of course, a bad thing. Oh! So, you know, if you accidentally picked up a pirate escape pod and you ended up with slaves and you could end up getting attacked at the space stations because you are now slave trading. Yes! And there was no way to dump cargo. This one, there's actually a way. You can dump cargo and there's a chance that the pirates will ignore you, apparently. Whoa! Missile armed. This one's moving a whole lot faster. It's a mamba! It's a mamba! It's a mamba! Yes, and you are going to get shot by me! 
Where are you going? I'm going to shoot you. Ah, come on. Yeah. This military laser does a lot of damage, but apparently it overheats too easily. I remember in the original game, I could take the bad guys down with a pulse laser. Actually, I remember in the original game that the, the mining laser did shoot really slowly, but it did more damage than any other laser, so it was a case of... it was like the sniper weapon. And everybody just said, you know, forget the military laser, just use the... just use... Weapon system, weapon system overheated. I'm slowing down so I can turn into this dude. There he goes again. Accelerate. Oh, this is so hard without yaw controls. And the yaw controls are there, but it's like on the other side of the keyboard. Thank you. Okay, let's go and pick up some of this stuff so we can sell it. Okay, first thing. What is that? There's something here. Let's, this is it. So I get it on the bottom half of the screen and then I get to pick it up. Whatever it is. Okay. Where? What is that noise? Is that my fuel scoop running very slowly? Ah, there. Okay, it's a tractor beam. I get in close and it scoops it up. Ah, oh, alien items! Excellent. So I'm, this is me making money by stealing from the pirates. Gargle container. Okay, let's get in close. So obviously this is how you make money as a pirate. You can shoot any ship in the game and steal their cargo. Six kilograms of gold. Why, that will do nicely, sir. Oh! Crikey. Lousy pilot. They should label those things better with like big shiny navigation lights. Or just do the elite, the, the, EVE, the EVE Online thing and make the cargo containers not things you can collide with. There we go. Oh, we got some slaves. Darn. I hope that doesn't ruin my status with those the police. Well, we'll guess we'll find out when I travel to the station. There's also narcotics. That's not a good thing. And firearms. Frontier added way more subtlety as to what was banned where. For example, there was two different governments. One was the, the Federation and the other was the, the Imperium. In the Imperium, slave trading was actually perfectly fine. But uh, they didn't like firearms, I guess, whereas the Federation were much more lax with firearms and mm, definitely against the whole slave trading thing. There was also a system in Frontier, I believe, where they considered gems to be garbage, so they would pay you to take away gemstones. Uh, there was, it was also possible in Frontier to like essentially take things like radioactive waste and they would pay you to take radioactive waste away but you can you could then fly off to some deep space area and dump it and you know assuming the police didn't see you then you could make you know you could then uh, come on oh i captured i captured uses nore i have no idea who that is or whether he's useless or not but he is now my prisoner Okay, ah, there it is there. Is that another escape pod? It is, I think. There it is, he's trying to get away. If I slow down. You rescued Maiton R. Maiton et R, okay, well, that is nice. I like, I think that's a space station that is silhouetted against the sun. How peaceful it looks, huh? This is looking to be a pretty good trip, actually. And yeah, I hope that dude. I suppose I'd better target him to find out if he's clean or not. Ah, he's clean. Yeah, Bo is a Bo is a cargo freighter thing. It's the biggest spacecraft for people that want to move a lot of stuff, so they don't tend to fight lots. Yeah, what else is going on? 
So yeah, the lots of conversions. I originally played the Amstrad version, which is actually it misses a bunch of spacecraft. It has its own missions. It had two missions. One was a you would jump into a system and everything would turn red and you would be told the star was about to explode. So you had to fly to the star and refuel on it. And then when you got to the station, you had a bunch of refugees you could take away. And if you did that successfully before the star exploded, and if you, as you were jumping out, you could see the star expanding in the background, it was really cool. They would give you like a ton of gemstones, which you know would make you a bunch of money. And the other one would be you'd be flying around minding your own business and suddenly you'd start getting attacked by this spacecraft that had it blinked in and out of existence of visibility and eventually if you killed that one you would get a cloaking device which was a you know useful item that would make you invisible I guess that's what cloaking devices do huh the BBC version I believe had it had trumbles that was one thing which was like tribbles that if you got these things on board you had to yeah, de-infest your ship either by using an escape I think you had to use an escape pod but I also think it might be possible to fly close to the sun to kill the infestation and you know if you had an infestation they would eat any food or anything that was on your ship oh the boa is under attack he's broadcasting for help okay let's see what's going on I'm going to the rescue but I don't see anyone where is he come on where's the dudes attacking you I see nobody. Ah, oh, this is going to take forever. The game is not exactly fast-paced. Even the fast-paced sections are not fast-paced. Okay. I can see somebody. Nope. Maybe not. Come on. You're there. There we go. This is a gecko. A garden gecko, I imagine. I guess I could launch a missile from all the way out here. Be nice to know how much how much shields he's got and how much my friend has got. Oh wait, there's more dudes here. He's got two guys attacking him. Maybe if I launch my missile I can grab his attention. And or maybe the guy in the python will die. Okay. Weapon system overheated. Okay. Weapon system overheated. Come on! Incoming missile. ECM system, ECM system activated. Okay, so I get two bad guys on me and. Oh, he's helping me though. I guess uh, maybe I can both gang up in this gecko. Incoming missile. Incoming missile. I'm gonna stay on this gecko. He is not really getting close though. Yes! I get a bounty from him. Okay, now where's the other dude? What is this? Oh, I think that might have been the python shooting that missile. Oh dear! No, 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 no! You are mine! You are mine! And you shall not... You shall not continue your pirating career if I have anything to say about it. Come on, get over the top! Yeah, who needs Newtonian physics for space combat? Seriously, it looks cool, but it's actually hard to make it fun. Actually, it, they do make it fun in some cases, and I should probably cover some of those games, but I really just wanted to come out here and play this for a little while because I wanted you to know that it exists. This is oolite.com, I believe. I'm just making that up, actually. Nope. It is so hard to shoot this guy. Yes! I got some machinery. Excellent. And I saved that dude's spacecraft. I feel like I've been doing such a good day, but he is he is still locking my mass for me. Um, 
so yeah, there were the Trumbulls. That was one mission. Another mission in the BBC, I believe, was you had to... Uh, there would be a space station that was taken over by Thargoids and they would give you a special missile that was immune to ECM. And Or they would give you an ECM jammer, which would make things a lot easier to use missiles. Because ECM basically blows up every missile that's nearby. So I've never found the missiles to be particularly useful, but it's very annoying when you see, see them in the game. Um, let me see what else. Yeah, the Dark Wheel, that was the name of the book. So yeah, I don't know. It, as I said, I'm trying to bring this to a new generation, more or less. Oolite, I'm wondering if I can find it. Oolite is, yeah, oolite.org. It's, well, it's it's been around for a long time. It's... <laughs> It originally was developed for Mac OS, but it's now available on Windows and Linux. I think it uses Objective-C and it has a whole scripting language to let you write all those things into it. And I believe that people have added things like generation ships and all the other missions and stuff that were people thought were in the original game. Or not so much thought, people wished were in the original game. Actually, yeah, the, the Oolite actually ended up winning uh, awards, believe it or not. One of the best fruit PC games should play today, according to TechRadar. I mean, you know, it's worth getting. It's free. I. It's it's hard to con I mean, it's hard to talk about this. I certainly love this game in so many ways. I love the original, but looking through it with. Looking through it with goggles, looking backwards with 2020 vision, it was definitely innovative for its time. It's not nearly as fun as, as it is now, as you know, modern games, let's say. It's definitely worth having, let's see. Okay, come on, trying to get to this space station. Let's see what I've got on my cargo. Look, I got, I got a decent haul there. I got a whole pile of gold and alien items. Some slaves. Well, I hope I don't. I hope that hasn't ruined my. I'm clean, but I'm still mostly harmless. So they haven't penalized me for carrying those slaves. It wasn't my fault. Well, actually, it was. Hyperspeed mass locked. Hyperspeed mass locked. I'm going to use my You're witch drive injectors. Because really, I just want to get here and finish this video out. <laughs> Yeah, if you're playing, here's a hint, right? Start out with agricultural worlds, buy furs and food and alcohol and stuff. And take those to industrial worlds and sell them. Then at the industrial worlds, buy machinery and computers and bring those back. Do that back and forth a few times. Buy yourself a docking computer first because a docking computer really takes the tedium out of actually having to do all the boring stuff. It gets very boring having to dock. It was even better in the original, um, in the original 8-bit versions because many of the 8-bit versions didn't have enough memory to implement a proper docking routine. So you would get within range of the space station, hit the docking button, and instantly you would dock. So it would save you a ton of time. So this docking computer doesn't feel quite as essential anymore, but it definitely helps a whole lot. If you if you can get just enough money for that, then you'll be set. I don't know how much money I made from the from the actual bounty hunting, but it's generally a lot smaller than the amount of money you make from trading. Really, the only way to make money in the game is trading. All the other options are largely cosmetic, because in the time it takes you to shoot down the other ships and take their cargo and everything, you could probably make more money on the trading groups and you're know, trading, buying and selling stuff. But, you know, you don't play these games to play a space stockbroker. You play these games to be a space pirate or asteroid miner or bounty hunter or, you know, fugitive smuggler or whatever. And in that case, you know, when, to keep with that in mind, it does a pretty good job at letting you do all of those things. Uh, as I said, if you want a more modern alternative, take a look at the X series of games. They're pretty darn amazing. If you want to do this MMO style, then, then EVE Online is the only way to go. And yeah, if you want a free game that lets you relive 
the early 80s or the mid 80s state of the art space trading game then Oolite that's the way to go and definitely can stand it can definitely take use of make use of a lot of the mods coming in here very carefully obviously this is why the original game only had roll and pitch controls it didn't have yaw controls because you needed to roll to get into the space stations you know, this was obviously paying homage to the the docking routine in the movie 2001 which has been often aped i mean it's even using waltz of the blue danube albeit a chip tune version which isn't so bad <laughs> there we go Oh, for rescuing a large slimy lobster from Atarza, their insurance pays 250. For rescuing a human colonial, the insurance pays 88.4. This includes a bribe for clearing their offender status. That's pretty cool, huh? Ah, get a, I'm now mostly harmless rather than harmless. That's a small step on the way to becoming elite, but I did all that when I was younger. I'm not sure I'm going to continue that. I have other games to play. So with that, I'm going to sell my loot, make some small amount of money, put it into my coffers, and indeed, with that, it is time for me to bid you farewell. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.